it's book review time. A number of the rather right-wing commentators on YouTube and, and other places have hit upon that famous book, The Camp of the Saints, to um to go on about. Let's let's be charitable and call it that. I could think of numerous other words or numerous other terms. I'm surprised they haven't hit upon the book I'm about to share now. I'm sure they've heard of Clockwork Orange, but this is a book by Andy Burgess as well, 1985. I think the title will probably tell you what it's a follow-up to. But in any case, 1985 is a novel by English writer Anthony Burgess. Originally, this book was published in 1978. It was inspired by it was intended as a tribute to George Orwell's 1984. It was adapted by Guy Merrow that is a radio play and broadcast on BBC Radio 3 on the 23rd of January 1985. I've never heard the radio play. I have read the book, which I bought recently for as research material. Having never heard of it before, it ties into something I'm trying to research. So I bought a copy for a couple of quid off the, that wonderful world Amazon. Another thing you might find is almost a dystopia. In any case, plot introduction, 1985 is in two parts. The first part, called 1984, is a series of essays and interviews. Burgess is the voice of the interviewer and the interviewee, discussing aspects of Orwell's books. The basic idea of dystopia is explicated, and the term cacotopia is also brought up and explored etymologically. You can get some quite bad jokes out of that one. The etymology of the word utopia is also deconstructed. Burgess treats Orwell as being somewhat bound by his times. Well, we all are, Anthony. No, no one is going to be able to knock me. Orwell is seen somewhat as a war-exhausted Brit fearing the Soviet threat along with the spectre of atomic war. It was a fairly real threat. <laughs> Orwell is treated as handing these ideas to the exclusion of other phenomena will come after to alter British society. I suppose you could make that as a reasonable critique of 1984. Certainly it is quite heavy on the, the whole Soviet form of communism of, of a particular type, as Orwell sees it, at least overwhelming world. Burgess fairly well explicates the distinction between Orwell's Ingsoc and the more mundane English socialism, as Burgess sees this actually in the Britain of his time. The second part, and that's what, what might be of interest to people, is a novel set in 1985. It's not particularly long. It's about 100 pages long, roughly. But rather than read out more of that, I'm going to read the plot summary. At the novel's beginning, the protagonist, Bev Jones, confronts the death of his wife. She was in a hospital when it caught fire. As the fireman's union was striking, the hospital burned to the ground. Bev is left alone with his daughter, Bessie, who is 13 years old, but sexually precocious and unable to comprehend the difference between reality and fantasy due to a thalidomide drug taken by a pregnant mother. Before I continue on this evening, I should point out I've got a bit of a cold, so I may found a bit waffly. Um, the death of his wife engenders in Bev a deep-seated hostility towards the Union sisters. Her last words were, don't let him get away with it. This is, however, not the first time Bev has been opposed to it. For him previously being a history, history lecturer who stepped down as his work was considered expendable by the Union-based system, which favoured education of practical value. Employed as a confectioner, he goes to work one day, despite his union being on strike. For working during a strike, his union membership is revoked, making him effectively unemployable. Knowing that he will soon lose his home, he takes Bessie to a state-run facility where she'll be cared for with other girls like herself. Bev then becomes something of a vagrant, travelling around London and falling in with a group of similarly unemployable dissenters. With this, he engages in petty theft from shops to survive. Apprehended during one such sortie, he is sentenced to re-education at a state institution, which is neither a prison nor a psychiatric help element, but can, hospital but contains elements of both. At the re-education centre, Bev is subjected to propaganda films and lectures, a theme which Burgess also examines in A Clockwork Orange, and I'm sure if people have seen Kubrick's version of Clockwork Orange, they'll remember the rather disturbing sequences that Kubrick makes of that. I'm very surprised this book has kind of seemed to pass under the, the radar of the the right-wing commentators you get like on um on YouTube because it starts with sort of um, a sequence of 
Bev sort of um, going on about the uh, the Messines calling to prayer in a modern England and the growth of Islam and so on. I'm surprised it hasn't been instantly adopted by them as with the camp of the saints and that they're not reading out of it on a million channels. I suspect having now in, that at least one person is going to read this. It's an interesting novel and Burgess makes some points that are true and some points that he overdoes. But that's, I always find that with Burgess. He's certainly always worth reading and he's not easy to ignore. You can't just chuck his points out the window. Um, he has a particular sort of slant on this sort of stuff that makes him awkward to just chuck away. And he's certainly, as I say, with his points about Orwell's critiques being focused in one direction have some validity, although I wouldn't agree with everything he has to say. But I'm going to share this link. The book is available for a few quid. And if anyone finds it interesting, let me know.